Hey, Ron. Hi, Pierce. Hey, what are the biggest shifts that you're seeing in terms of consumers and how they're approaching the omnichannel shopping journey today? I love this question because there are there, there there's definitely been a shift in how the, the customers navigating the, the world between channels. So we kind of think of this as being channelists in so many ways, but what I've observed in the last year is that kind of the customer's expectation of what's in store versus what's online. So you could say it, this is only available on our website, not available in stores. This is only available in stores, not online. Has actually become um, a really important distinction that they are more, more similar than different. So if the customer is doing a lot of homework on, on the website, enjoying the brand, thinking, wow, and I also know they've got a store, I wanna continue this great experience and move it to the store. And, but then what happens is you go into the store and then the product's not there. Some of your favorite pieces aren't there. Um, the, it, the friction has already begun. So it's become less um, of a seamless experience of trying to merge all the different, um, the inventory levels. And so this kind of scarcity of product in stores can lead to then kind of failure to build a sale based on, on wherever the inventory is sitting. And that's definitely a shift. I think the customer was more patient for unique product in separate channels. And that, I, my observations has been, that is no longer the case. And so I think that's, that is a shift in on how we were operating our business today. Hey, Ron, one of the things we're interested in is this notion of the in-store appointment. And, and obviously that's been around for a long time within the context of the luxury space, but as we kind of adjust to the, the new ways of shopping, how do you see that kind of scaling in a more kind of traditional retail setting? And, and what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I love the, the idea that appointment setting can be also about education and about product reserve. So I was running Apple stores uh, 10 years ago, now more actually, and and they really pioneered outside of department store high end luxury apple pioneered the idea of appointment based service so appointments for training appointments for genius bar appointments for pickups all of that and the idea is i actually want to reserve time with someone who's an expert who can teach me something or make sure my products in stock mm -hmm. and apple still does all of those things today because it's such an important part of our experience as humans in retail is that we want to make sure the product that we want is in stock, it's reserved in our name, and that I'm going to work with someone who is going to then show me how to wear it, teach me how to use it, um, that I have an experience with the product. So I actually think appointment-based service, regardless of price point, is a really beautiful way to engage with someone versus kind of what we do the other you know, 90 percent of the time is you kind of get what you get when you walk in at that time and there may their product might be in stock it might not someone might be available to help you or, or maybe not uh, and that kind of time um, opportunity can be really lacking uh, and so i think wherever we can do often technology enhanced appointment based that's rooted in training and service uh, is is a win today yeah, I, I love the way you you talk about that idea of time because it is such like a precious commodity yeah. and so much of what we kind of think about is like, okay, let's make this as efficient as possible. But then actually, if you kind of like frame up this moment, then yeah. there's so much more that you can kind of offer within that. You And you could do work in advance and say, well, you know, how um, I'll reference my own experience leading Bonobos you know, that was also appointment based um, in the more contemporary price point where we would say, we wanna make sure that every man that comes in has an experience that's teaching him maybe how to wear something and need something new, how your clothes should fit, all of this. It was very educational, but part of it was also then closing the sale by placing a web order. And not all of it was appointment based, but we really encouraged it because you get the best version of that experience um, as when you know you've reserved time. So Ron, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about 
you know, this idea of balancing technology with more of these kind of human elements in terms of how retailers and brands should kind of approach putting solutions in place for their um, employees. So I, I love the idea of being transparent enough to say, we are going to commit to your growth and development in order to retain and grow our business. And so everyone that works in the frontline teams, again, not about price, really thinks about, is this the right career choice for me? Is this, some, is this work I want to do? Am I committed to doing that? And that happens when brands say, I would love to provide great growth opportunities, training opportunities, financial incentives, um, maybe product incentives to be able to retain those, that top talent. And so that frontline worker, I think about what is their experience every day? What they are in many cases, you know, last year, the first to engage with customers. And that was a very, you know, talk about leading with empathy every day. It was about, are you okay? Do you feel safe? Is there something I can do to make sure that that happens? And the, the more transparent we can be as leaders to know that we are, we are here, we are curious, we're listening, we're acting, we are um, providing the best possible opportunities for you to have great compensation models and create great experiences is, is a winning formula. Uh, and so sometimes those tools become technology. So it could be clienteling apps. It could be ways to chat with your customers via text. It could be um, different, different kind of follow-up and relationship building tools. But I think sometimes the the human engagement is the most motivating one. And the one that says, you know what? I know that, that um, Ron's listening. I know asking questions. I know that we're building um, a culture that is rooted in service and serving, serving the, the frontline teams as leaders because they're serving everyone that walks in the door. And that, that mentality for me is a really important way to think about that frontline. I love how you're sort of thinking about the, you know, I mean, the technology certainly can come in and, you know, augment some of these things, but if you're not approaching it from the right point of view and what, how it's helping that, then it's probably not going to fall or have the right impact, so to speak. Yeah, I, I agree with you because that, that's where I lean in on curiosity and say, well, what actually do you need? Do you need tools to do your job better? Or is this, you need more time? Do you need more um, inventory? Like, what do you need to actually do your job better? And it's not always technology. And that, and sometimes it is. So it's that balance of, well, actually, yes, we need contactless pay. Everyone is interested in contactless pay. So let's make sure that happens. Or, um, you know, we need to be able to be in here during more off time hours so that we can accomplish web orders when we're not open. Like that's a real function to say, we're gonna do web orders from nine to 11. Before we open at 11, we, we serve our customers from 11 to six. And then, you know, from six to seven, we do other orders that came through. Like we have to really think about those things in organizing our businesses in very tactical ways that support both channels. It's, you know, both channels are equally important today. Inventory is really important. And I would just add, you know, that this is a conversation that's not about price, is that this relationship that you can have with, with your team and with your client is not, doesn't just happen in the luxury space. This can happen anywhere, should be happening anywhere, because that's how you build that loyalty and acquisition. And you know, Net Promoter is all about likelihood to recommend. So, and that is at every price. And so I, I love, you know, there's, I, my office is here in Times Square in New York City. There's a Starbucks across the street that used to be the worst place to get, try to get a coffee because every, all the tourists, everybody was here. And you know, having been in the office now for several months, now I go in and they're like, hey, Ron, you know, it's like, now it's my favorite Starbucks in the middle of Times Square because the traffic's down. So they've built a relationship with me. And you know, every brand has the opportunity to do that, to build relationships uh, that are 
inherent of how we're all going to grow our businesses for years to come. Ron, maybe you can talk a little bit about, um, you know, again, with everything that we've seen over the past 12 months or so, a lot more people are, you know, sort of going to online either as a, its own journey or in support of that sort of um, shift in store. Yeah. So as we kind of see digital playing a bigger role in that, in how the store functions, maybe you can talk about how you see the, the role of the store kind of changing in this new omni-channel world we're living in. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I think the final, this kind of final mile of the store piece of the, the homework that you're doing, you're, you're discovering new brands, you're thinking about what's owned, the store becomes the best expression of your brand. And so the kind of the, the touch, the feel, the scent, um, the experience, the people, the store design, all of it is the, the ultimate expression of your brand. So when I think about this world of how do we, how do we make both experiences, both channels, um, and if you add in kind of so, a social media experience as kind of a third, but how does it become the, the, the kind of the education, less tactical experience on web and the best experience in stores? And that's where I think the, the most fun begins because that is about celebrating the store teams and saying, you are here to deliver an experience that is about capturing new customers, customer acquisition, about building loyalty, about educating the customer based on whatever it is you're selling. Maybe it's a styling um, activity, fitting rooms, building the sale, building relationships, all of that happens in the store. And it's the most human part of retail. And that is the, the part that I work so hard to recognize and celebrate every day.